In today's show, we're going to learn how to add Zoom into our Power Apps. That's right. You want to be able to zoom in on all those wonderful images that you have? We're going to add that with a couple little tricks, right? We're going to use some different controls to build a Zoom experience that isn't too bad. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to do Power Apps Zoom. So the idea here is that there's no way to zoom in on images as a user of the app, right? When the native controls, right? There's no zoom or scroll or any of that type of thing. So I needed to add that for one of my projects recently. I had to figure it out. So we're going to combine a couple of controls and show you how you can build your own zoom feature. And it's super easy. So even better. All right, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here's where I used it the first time, right? So this invoice review app, right? It was a, oh, I'm gonna check out an invoice here. So if we click on this one, and you can see that we are scanning invoices, right? We're using the AI processing, right? So this was my recent videos. If you haven't seen it, there's a link up there to it. But if I wanted to really be able to zoom in here, maybe I couldn't read my terrible handwriting without making it bigger. I just grab the scroll bar here, whoop, and look at that. We are zoomed in and we can see everything in glorious detail, right? We can zoom one more I and mean, we can get it really big. And so that is not native functionality in Power Apps, unfortunately, the ability to zoom on an image. But the good news is, is with one, I guess two little controls real quick, we can build this capability. So how did I build it? Well, let's switch over to this other app. And so this is one we're going to use to do it. Um, and so this one, I did it just a little bit differently. But if we want to zoom in on Chewy here, we're just going to use a little plus arrow. So what's the key to this? Well, what it really is, is that we're going to take a container, right? So we've talked about using containers before with responsiveness, but you can take a container, put that on the screen, and then put your image control inside of there, and then you dynamically set the width and height of the um, image control, and the container will automatically scroll, right? Pretty straightforward. So let's just do it. To do it, what we'll do is we'll go over here, let's just add a new screen, and we'll go to the plus menu, and then we're going to, for the layout category, we're gonna pick a container. Horizontal or vertical, it wouldn't matter. Uh, I've been using horizontal, because it comes first. So you're gonna throw the container on the screen, and then make it whatever size you want to use your image to have it scroll in, okay? So once you've done that, now what I wanna do is we're gonna switch back to this view, we're gonna put an image control inside of there. So, boom, the image control drops in. And what you wanna do here with the image control is you're going to say, hey, for right now, well, I guess first we can put an image in there. So let's add an image file. Let's jump over to my desktop. And we'll grab um, the Chewy mug. We'll open that one up. Okay, so now after a second it loaded. And keep in mind, we're using a hard image here, but the other examples were both dynamic images. We'll talk about that more in a minute because it, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get the image to show up in the image control, this technique is going to work, right? So there's no special things about where the content came, for, came from. Okay, so now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the height of this thing. I'm just gonna say, hey, your height is parent.height and your width is parent.width. Yeah. <laughs> right here, so then parent.width. Okay, so that makes the image control take up whatever size the container is. The nice thing about using those parameters is if I decide that I wanna resize the container, I can like, oh, you know what, I need to use more space, then things just rearrange, right? So changing the container's size and layout automatically changes the image, so it makes it easier as you're designing and tweaking what you've built. Okay, so that's the first thing, right? When you get an image control inside of there. Now we wanna make it dynamic. So what I'm going to do for the moment is we're just going to grab a slider. I think the slider experience, I, I've shown it both ways. I like the slider experience better, but you know, it's up to you. Oh, I do not want that inside the container, delete. I want it outside of there. So let's try this again, input a slider. And so the slider just lets you input a number, right? So I can drag this thing to 50, to one, to eight, boom, 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 boom. Okay. So now that we have a slider and we have all the pieces, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the image control and say, all right, your width is actually going to be parent width plus, and then we're going to do 25 times slider to dot value. And we're just going to put that in parentheses just to make our lives easier. So do that. So that's what that does. We're going to copy that and do the same exact thing for height. 
Hubbard's height. Height. Okay. So now you can see that if I change the slider, it is changing the size of the image control. But it's not exactly what I want yet. Right? So what is missing here is what you need to do is click on your container. And then you want to go to your container over here on the right and say, hey, horizontal overflow instead of hide is scroll and vertical is scroll. So now when the image control gets bigger, look at that. What's happening? It is actually, um, the container knows that the image control is giant. So it is trying to help you see it. So now I can zoom, I can move around and see what's going on here, right? So, and this lovely little coffee mug here, this is from my friend Edward. He drew and designed all of that. And so I thought it was kind of a neat thing to zoom in on. All right, then we can zoom back out. And actually, that's not the better picture. I have a less blurry picture of that. I should have used that. How rude. Um, now you can kind of see, right, we can control the size. And so if I set it out here really big, what you're going to see is if you click on the image control now, I'm going to zoom out on my studio, you see the blue box. Right? So the image control is really that big right now. And so it's not really zooming, it's just making the image control bigger. And since the image is set to fit inside the image control, it is automatically getting larger, right? So that's why it looks so nice, or why it's so big there, right? Because we're able to zoom in and out of there. And if we set this thing all the way back to zero, then now if you were to look at the same thing, right? The image control is inside the box hold down the alt key and if I drag this you can see it um, get bigger right so kind of a cool way right but that's it that's the whole kit and caboodle right obviously I'm gonna show you a few more things about it but that's how it works at a, at a thing is we're just dynamically changing the size of the image control so if you get that let's go back over here and talk about what we did a little bit differently on this one let's go back to a full size so in this particular one you know, um, what you're going to see is that all I did was instead of using a slider, I wanted to have this like plus experience. And right, so we can kind of, I mean, if we want to like really zoom down in here into the, that flower, let's see, let's put it at the top. So, right, we're just hitting plus, 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 but we're really able to zoom in. And because this is a really high resolution photo, it's not getting blurry, even though we are super zoomed in at this point, right? Like if we were to look now, so if we were to go like this and then click on that image control again, where's the image control right here? I mean, look at that. That image control is currently three times the size of my screen. That's why we're able to dig in there so deep. Um, so the way that these buttons are working, oh, let's put it back here, is that in this uh, particular image control for the uh, width and the height, but we'll just do the width, it is parent width uh, plus 25 times var multiplier. And you can change this 25. I just wanted to change in 25 um, increments. You can change it whatever you want. Um, but all the other things are still the same. And so if you hit the plus arrow, it just says set var multiplier to be plus one. And if you hit this one, it does minus one. This one sets it back to zero. So I get to go back to zero. I can even go smaller. So for some reason, I wanted to make the image a lot smaller. But keep in mind, once again, right, that the container size hasn't changed, but the container doesn't have to show scroll bars right now because the control inside of it is smaller than it, right? So the container's got all the smarts that's making this happening. We're just dynamically changing the size. Um, reset that again. So other things you might be interested here, um, the image control itself. So this right here, this is a document library, or sorry, this is a gallery. It is showing my document library from SharePoint called uh, photo files. So if we, if we were to go to items, we would see that. It's just photo files. And so then this is just showing the thumbnail. Remember the thumbnail, so there's small, medium, and large. The thumbnails are just smaller versions, which are smaller means lower resolution, which means a smaller file size, faster file transfers, faster performing apps. So using a thumbnail over here, I, I probably should be using small, honestly, because they're still going to look the same. But the Data load is a lot smaller, hence the name small, in this case. And then when I click over here on the image, so let's find uh, the other cup from Edward. There you go. Like, you see how this is pretty blurry, right? Like this is, and that's because we're using the small thumbnail. And so if we were to click on this, right, it's loading over here, it's loading the full image. And now we could super zoom in on my mug. And this is a much cleaner version 
of that picture and my wife being a hand model. Hi, Nicola. There you go. She's probably embarrassed now that her hand's on the internet. Um, and then what I did here, though, was I also uh, set it so I could toggle it to use the thumbnail. And so it's kind of hard to tell, but it got a lot, it got blurrier. Let's do this. So the way that that works is if we click on the image control, not there, the image control here, this image control, its image is set to, if toggle two values, so if the toggle is set to true, then use gallery selected thumbnail. Let's do small for this one as well. So that way you can see, like, look at how pixelated that is. Because a small thumbnail is a really tiny image. And so, yes, you can make it bigger, but the bigger you are, the more pixelated it becomes. That's why it looks so bad when it's the thumbnail view, um, but it's a lot lower of a load. If I'm not using the thumbnail view, then I am referencing the SharePoint full path directly. And this is getting me the super high resolution, you know, in this case, like eight meg photo. And that's why thumbnail, super blurry, switch it to full image, super clear. So that's how that is working. Now, keep in mind that this whole idea of referencing a SharePoint file directly like this, this is only going to work if your browser can load it. So if you already have the cookie, you would have a hard time getting this to work on mobile devices, right? There's additional hoops to jump through to get all that to work, but we're not dealing with those today, right? All we really care about is this idea of incorporating Zoom into your app. I also think there's other opportunities to use this Zoom for more than just images. I've got like ideas, but I haven't tried any of them yet. So feel free to experiment with it, but just right, the container's doing all the work. He, he's the one doing all the scrolling, ups and downs, left and right. We're just dynamically changing the size of our object and the scroll, the container's doing it. So, so that's it. Simple, quick little video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you like ideas like this. Uh, if you got questions, comments, leave them below. Other ideas, I'm all, all ears, but I don't know. I made this up for that other thing. Thought I'd share this as a standalone video so you guys could enjoy. Yep, and with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right, check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything, and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.